Hey guys, Nonzero here, coach of the Pittsburgh Sales Steelers, bringing you my week 7 team builder and match analysis for the DGBA. So my opponent this week rocking a team of Exadrill, Hippowdon, Latios, Keldeo, Weavile, Zerkatry, Alkazam, Mega, Florgus, Breloom, Excelgor, and Dragalge, with Latios being the mon that could carry Z Crystal. So my opponent has a lot of threats in this draft. If you look at his first 5 mons, it looks like he's rocking the Nightmare from Gen 6 OU, just slap a Fable on there and you have a solid team. But in any case, he is running a nice sand mode with his Exadrill and Powdon. He also has a lot of just really powerful hard hitting mons. And some nice special bulk in his Florgus. So I've marked the six mons that I expect my opponent to bring in this matchup. I do expect him to bring his sand. I think his sand can definitely be pretty effective against me and I need to watch out for that for sure. I also think he's going to bring his Zerkatry. I think Zerkatry is the most likely bring after his sand because without his Zerkatry, he really has nothing to deal with my Skarmory. And then also, I think he's going to bring Latios and Weavile. I, I just don't have the best switch ins to either of those two mons. I guess Skarmory can kind of switch into Weavile, but really doesn't appreciate a knockoff. Finally, I think he's going to bring Florgus because the special bulk there I think will really help him out versus mons like my Tapu Koko. And also my Gudra, I can take on both of those pretty well. Other potential brings for my opponent include the Alakazam Mega, which might be a thing. It's just an incredibly offensive, hard-hitting Mon, which, which might be running just an all-out attacking set and something like, you know, Psychic Focus Blast, maybe Dazzling Gleam, and then another coverage option to hit something. And you could also potentially bring Breloom as sort of something that would prevent me from Mega evolving my Gyarados too soon. Of course, after I've Mega Evolved my Gyarados, that thing does threaten me with a Technician Mach Punch, which will knock me out if I have, like, even a little bit of prior damage, so... Definitely have to keep that in mind, and because of that, I might end up, um, not Megaing, or making sure that Breloom's dealt with before I try to do anything with my Gyarados. So let's go ahead and jump into the six mons I'm going to bring. I've already spoiled the first one. It's going to be my boy, a Dragon, the Gyarados. Rockin' a Gyarados site, just the same set that I've been bringing pretty much every week so far. And just adamant nature, max attack, this time I didn't run any bulk. I was considering running some spidef, that way I could take, say, Garf Zerkatree's Thunderbolt. But I really did think that the immediate speed would help out here. The immediate speed allows me to outspeed mons like the Weavile at plus one and outspeed the Exadrill if it's max speed in the sand after two boosts. So that's that. The coverage here, I ran bounce over something like Earthquake to knock out the Zerkatry because I didn't want to get straight walled by the Breloom. If he does, by chance, bring a defensive Breloom set, which might be a possibility, then it would just be able to wall me if I ran Earthquake, uh, Crunch, and Waterfall. So that's, that's why I ran bounce on the set and really this is all the coverage I need to just kind of decimate this team after a couple of Dragon Dances. Which is the thing that Kurtos does just so well. And so yeah, this Mon really does just run through his draft. The other reason I bounce is if he does choose to bring the Keldeo, then I'll have something to take that thing on. In any case, let's go ahead and jump into my second pick. So let's go ahead and jump into the second Mon on my team, and that's going to be Zygarde, of course. Running a Life Orb. Jolly Nature, Outrage, Dragon Dance, Extreme Speed, and Thousand Arrows. So I thought that Zygarde would be a really good choice for this matchup, because if I can use one of my Gyarados and my Zygarde to dent holes in his team early on, then the other one can sweep later. So here's an example of, of sort of a scenario that might happen, right? Maybe Gyarados is in, it's gotten up to plus one, and my opponent revenges me with the Scarf Circuitry. But if a Scarf Zerkatry revenges me with Thunderbolt, then that gives this thing a free setup. Now the reason that I'm running Jolly over Adamant is so that at plus one I can outspeed a potential max speed Scarf Zerkatry. And also Jolly is all I need to be able to knock out Weavile after rocks with a plus one extreme speed. Which is very important because the Weavile could potentially have an Ice Shard for this thing. So the extra power there was why I felt the Life Orb was necessary. I could have also gone with a Yachi Berry I was considering for a while, but I think the Life Orb to the immediate power is just really good here. 
Alright, let's go ahead and jump into the third mon that I'm bringing to this matchup, and that is going to be Skarmory. It's my boy Celesteela Jr. And this week I'm going to be bringing a Max Bidef set. It's the reason this thing is Max Bidef is that it takes on Exadrill and Papaldon anyway, like even without the defensive investment. And what I really need this thing to be able to take on is the Florgus and the Alakazam, if he brings those. The Alakazam not as much, I have some priority and I have some other options for the Alakazam, but especially the Florgus, this is kind of the mod that I'm going to be counting on to 1v1 the Florgus, if he chooses to bring that. And so I'm bringing Stealth Rock, Roost, Iron Head, and Sword Stance. And so why am I bringing Sword Stance, right? So the reason I'm bringing Sword Stance is because otherwise this thing doesn't actually beat Exadrill 1v1, right? If I had a fourth move that was something like Toxic, then I wouldn't be able to beat Exadrill 1v1. And I want this thing to be able to beat Exadrill 1v1 because it's going to be my main switch into the Exadrill. So that's the rationale behind this Skarmory set. And let's go ahead and just jump into my next pick, which is going to be Solemn's Defa, the Infernape, rocking a choice band Iron Fist set, Adamant Nature. I didn't run a Jolly Nature because it doesn't actually outspeed anything uh, relevant. It would get the speed tile with Keldeo, but there's no way I'm going to risk that anyways unless I'm sacking this thing. So in any case, why am I running Choice Band? Well, Choice Band allows this mon to actually one-shot the Exadrill 100% of the time after rocks with the Mach Punch. So it's a great check to the Exadrill if it gets out of hand in sand, and the rest of these moves just hit the rest of his team pretty hard. I'll be clicking U-turn early game most of the time, especially because Latios might be a potential switch into this thing. And I have Gunk Shot on the set just in case he's running defensive Florgus. All in all, I think he has very few switch-ins to Abandoned Infernape, and so I think that Sanj Defoe could put in a lot of work this week, potentially. Alright, let's go ahead and jump into my next pick, which is going to be Lieutenant Surge. As usual, I don't think I've gone a week without bringing this thing, and he's coming again this week. Lieutenant Surge with a Choice Scarf. I actually can't outspeed his Exadrill in the sand if he's running Jolly, but if he's running Adamant, this does outspeed Exadrill in the sand. And in general, it just outspeeds any Scarpers that he might bring, and it also just hits his team really, really hard. If he doesn't bring the floor, I guess he doesn't have the best switch-ins to Dazzling Gleam, U-Turn, and Thunderbolt. Now, certainly, this thing will become a lot more effective once Exadrill and Hippowdon are gone, but but early game, I anticipate using Lieutenant Surge, mostly as just a momentum generator with U-Turn. And also, if I predict the Hippowdon switch in to get up the sand, I will throw off a Toxic. I think Toxicking the Hippowdon would be very, very helpful. Put that thing on the timer so it can't keep fueling uh, Exadrill sand. Alright, so now on to the sixth mon that I'm going to bring into this matchup, and that's going to be my boy Creative Color, the Shaman. So green, if you hadn't heard previously, is in fact a creative color. Don't believe what you hear all the time. And I'm going to be running a defensive Shaman this week. So this Shaman is another switch in to the Exadrill. It can also handle the Latios pretty well. The Spit FEV is allowed to take on the Latios somewhat reliably. And now it can't switch into a Z move. Of course, I mean nothing on my team really can. But it can take a Draco followed by a minus two Draco, so. It's mainly a defensive mod that's just meant to be a good pivot. Has Leech Seed and Synthesis for good staying power. I have Air Slash because the only thing that I can't Leech Seed is the Breloom. And actually the Breloom can't really do much to me because I'm so defensive. So looking at my team initially, you might think that I have two Dragon Dance Sweepers in my Gyarados and my Zygarde. But in fact, because of the Shaman set, I have three Dragon Dance Sweepers. Healing Wish means that if one of my Gyarados or my Zygarde gets severely weakened, but I think it can put in some work still in late game, I can just save it, switch out, and heal it back up with this healing wish later. It also allows me to play more aggressively with my sweepers. If they take a lot of damage early on in the game, that's fine, I can just heal and wish them up later. So anyway, those are going to be the six that I bring. Feeling pretty good about this matchup, definitely scared about both the sand mode on my opponent and the Latios, I don't have the best answers to those. Really, I decided to go with more of an offensive approach than anything else, so I hope it's able to put in the work, and I'll be right back letting you know how the match itself went. And we are back with the matchup. My opponent deciding to bring a team of Zerkatry, Exadrill, Hippowdon, Alakazam, Weavile, and Excelgore. So the main surprise for me was Excelgore. I'm guessing that's going to be a 
spike stacking set of some sort. Let's go ahead and jump into the match and see what happens. I'm going to go ahead and lead off with my Infernape. In the case that he led off with his... In the case that he led off with Excelgar, I wanted to lead off with something that could threaten that Mon out. So I did go ahead and lead off with my Infernape. In turn 1, I'm just going to click a U-turn on the Sapaudon. Go ahead and go into my Skarmory and we trade Hazards here. He gets up his Stealth Rocks. I'm going to go ahead and get up my Stealth Rocks as he switches into his Alakazam. So here I'm going to go ahead and stay in because I'm so specially defensive I know I can take any one hit as that does absolutely nothing. That is Max Fidef's Skarmory for you. I'm able to take that Shadow Ball really well. And here I do go ahead and go for the Roost. I wanted this Skarmory to be as healthy as possible. I am risking a Spideff drop there but even if he gets the Spideff drop I'm recovering off a lot more with Roost than he's doing to me um, with his Shadow Ball or his Psychic. So I'm going to go ahead and knock him out there with the Iron Head, as this does give him a switch in into his Zerkatry. Now at this point I have a couple of different options I can go for switching in, but I go for the mid-ground play I think, which is to go ahead and just switch into my Shaman. With this Spideff investment I can take any hit pretty well, as he does go there for the Dazzling Gleam. Probably the worst case would have been him going for HP Ice, but in that case I would have been able to at least get the intel that he was packing HP Ice. So he was probably predicting my Zygarde there. Now the fact they went for a Dazzling Gleam over Hidden Power Ice probably means that he doesn't have Hidden Power Ice, but I'm not, of course, 100% on that. This turn I am just going to go ahead and throw off a Leech Seed, just to wear off whatever he wants to switch in. He goes hard into Weavile, which is kind of surprising because Weavile is not generally a mon that you hard switch into something like a Shaman, which has decent offenses. As at this point, I am going to go ahead and make the hard switch into my own Infernape as he knocks off the choice band. So, the reason I wanted to switch in my Infernape there, there are actually a couple of things. One, I actually felt that my Infernape was more useful in this match without the choice band, based on the mons that he brought. I wanted to be able to switch up between, say, Mach Punch, threatening the Weavile, and the Exedrill, as well as Flare Blitz, to hit the Excelgor. I felt that in general having my choice band knocked off was better for the utility of my Infernape, and I also felt that Infernape overall was not an absolutely essential mon. Didn't really feel like I needed to keep it healthy. So that's why I felt okay switching into it here. I go ahead and I don't really predict anything. I was considering going for the U-turn. That probably would have been the play um, in retrospect because it's not really likely that the Weavile would be able to knock me out from that range. In any case, I just went for the safe Mach Punch play, as this does give him an opportunity to set up the sand and then follow it up with a hard switch into Exadrill. Now, I'm not too sure that I agree with the hard switch into Exadrill, because that thing would have been easily to it KO'd by my Mach Punch, but I guess he was probably just predicting the U-turn there. So in any case, I am able to get my Shaman here, and he can't really touch the Shaman, so... I do just go ahead and throw off a synthesis, I want to keep this thing healthy. Even though, um, obviously it's in the sand, the synthesis isn't going to heal me as much. It does bring me almost back up to full after sand and leftovers, so... That's pretty solid. Now, my Shaman is a mon that I definitely want to keep around because it deals really well with his Zergatry, his Exadrill, and his Hippowdon. So I go ahead and switch into the Infernape, as I am more than happy to trade that thing for the Weavile. Alright, so now he goes ahead and goes into his Zergatry. So if he's Scarfed here, then he's not going to be able to knock me out with any one hit. But if he is not Scarfed, then Hidden Power Ice has a very solid chance to knock me out, depending on uh, what his item is. And so I didn't want to risk that he was not Scarfed here, so I do just stay in and rather go for the Dragon Dance. I go for the safe play in this situation which is just to knock the Mon in front of me out with a thousand arrows. So yeah, once again I could have Dragon Danced up there and then I would have been in a really good position because Sand would have ran out, he would have been forced to switch into a Sapaudon, and I would have been able to dent that thing. But in any case, I am able here to just switch into my Skarmory, take the oncoming Earthquake, and at this point, he doesn't have the best way to deal with Skarmory. 
He hard switches into his Excelgor, which is an interesting play. I go ahead and go for the Sword to Dance, because that's the way, as I mentioned in the Team Builder, then I'm able to beat both the Hippowdon and the Exedrill 1v1. But in any case, he is going to bring his Excelgor out at this point, and uh, I'm not really sure what he wants to do here. I probably should have seen this Final Gambit coming. Final Gambit is kind of a common move on Excelgor, and it was a really good move for our opponent to go for at that point, because if he's able to get rid of this Skarmory, then his Exedrill still has the, some potential to sweep through the rest of my team. I do, however, have my Shaman still near full HP, so I wasn't too worried. He does unfortunately miss his Rock Slide here, which is very, very unfortunate for my opponent. That would have been enough to take out my Skarmory. And then what I probably would have happened is I would have gone into my Shaman, Healing Wished up my Zygarde potentially, and hopefully gone on to either sweep from there or just to wear down his remaining two Mons with a combination of my Zygarde and my Gyarados. So in any case, we're going to have a little bit of a Swords Dance War here. Exedrill is actually going to be able to take me out with the next Rock Slide, but it's going to put him in range of my uh, Tapu Koko's U-Turn, which is awesome because it means that I can just really safely click U-Turn here and not have to worry about predicting anything. It wouldn't make sense for him to switch anyway because his Hippowdon can't get rid of the Stealth Rock, and 2% is in range of a Stealth Rock switch in for Exedrill. But in any case, I can just click U-Turn here, go out into my Gyarados, and uh, win the 1v1 versus his Hippowdon. And that's going to be a good game. It's a great game to my opponent. Sorry about the uh, Rock Slide miss at the end there. But in any case, I think it was a pretty solid match overall. And uh, in any case, that is going to be it for now. So I will see you uh, later tonight with the other match that I played recently in the DGBA. And so see you guys later.